Sean, before we even get to the Warriors or Kobe, I know there's a lot of jostling going around for playoff seating, and there's one spot left. Tell me why I should care. You know, this is when my NBA fandom really kicks in. Seems to me like there's four or five teams that have a legit shot at this thing. Should I care about who the three seed or four seed is in the Eastern Conference or who gets in in the Western Conference? Well, I don't think you should care about the three and the four seed in the East. Those teams, Atlanta, Miami, Boston, Charlotte, they're pretty much even in terms of talent. How they match up in the first round, I don't think it's going to make a big difference one way or the other in the East and how that shakes out. But in the West, you know, look, Houston's had, I mean, what a year. I mean, losing Kevin McHale, uh, Ty Lawson didn't work out, you know, basically for a team that reached the Western Conference Finals last year and had an MVP contender in James Harden, just, just a disaster year, but they still have a shot. They win, they're in. And to see them play the Warriors, and look, I, I'm sure it'll be a sweep, but at least they've salvaged a, what was really a, a really bad season. Yeah, I mean, but do they salvage it just by making the playoffs and losing to the Warriors? I, I mean, they at least get back to the postseason. I mean, I think it's a really big deal for them uh, to save a little face. Um, I, I still think there's probably going to be major changes in the off se- in the off season. I'm not so sure Dwight Howard comes back. I would be surprised. If he doesn't come back, then what are you going to do with that team? You're going to have to pretty much reinvent that team. What about Daryl Morey? Does he return as general manager? There's still going to be questions. But at least they give themselves, you know, some life, some, you know, face-saving gesture by getting back to the playoffs and playing the Warriors again. We're talking with Sean Powell. does a really nice job for NBA.com here on the Dan Patrick Show. You mentioned the Warriors, Sean. How big is this record to you? I mean, I think we can debate how much regular season records really matter. How much does it matter to you? Well, you know, I was around to see the Bulls uh, get their 72 wins, and I see the two teams similar in this respect. Number one, they were very, very tough to beat, obviously. You're going to win that many games. But they also had a rock star surrounding. I mean, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, I mean, these guys are now the face of the, of the NBA. Uh, used to be LeBron James and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, but that's changed. That's split. Uh, the Warriors are must-see TV. They're entertaining. Um, they're bringing in the casual basketball fan. A lot of fun to watch. Very positive for the NBA all around. And they're pretty much an enjoyable bunch, starting with, you know, Steve Kerr on down. So... I think that's all good. I mean, what it means, I mean, I don't know. I I think we can't answer that question until after the NBA Finals. If they win the championship, then, yeah, it's a big deal. But getting that record and not getting the championship, then I think it's sort of more of a hollow feeling. So give give me a percentage chance in your mind that the Golden State Warriors repeat, that they win it. I mean, are we talking 50% chance in your mind or 90% chance that they win it all again? And if they don't, who beats them? Well, Ross, I think it's probably their championship to lose. Um, Of course, I was watching the Masters, and I saw, you know, Spieth, what, after the, what, eighth, ninth hole, and I thought, you know, the tournament was his to lose, and obviously he lost it. Uh, But can you imagine beating this team four times in a seven-game series? Um, you know, that's very tough to imagine. I mean, right now in the West, you know, the team's trying to prevent the Warriors from getting to the NBA Finals. I think you have to narrow it down maybe to the Spurs and Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, we don't know what the Clippers will look like when Blake Griffin gets back, but even with Blake, they haven't been able to handle the Warriors. Uh, so, I mean, those are the only two teams that can really trip them up. The Warriors are pretty deep also, Ross. you got to understand that Steph Curry doesn't have to play 40 minutes a game. Like Jordan had to play 40 minutes a game for the Bulls. Steph Curry doesn't have to do that because they're deep, well-coached. They pass the ball. They play well. Look, I'm not telling you anything you haven't seen. Uh, and then when you look in the East, who can stop the Warriors other than the Cavaliers? I know Toronto's played them very well this season, uh, but it's just, that's just the regular season. And Toronto may not even get out of the East. 
the, the one factor is this. You know, last year, Cleveland didn't have Kyrie Irving for the most part, didn't have Kevin Love, and they, and they were up 2-1 on the Warriors. And so people would say, well, you know, if those guys are healthy, they're going to play a more competitive series. But, of course, LeBron James had to play out of his mind for them to get up 2-1. Uh, I just think right now it's the Warriors to lose. I think, you know, based on what we've seen in, in a regular season and what we know this team is capable of doing, of doing in the postseason, I'd be very surprised if they didn't get a championship. Yeah, I think it's a good point, Sean. I was watching them Sunday night. I couldn't believe how long Kerr kept Steph Curry out, and they extended their lead when Curry was out. Which It's just, it's frankly amazing. I love them. I hope they beat the record t- uh, tomorrow night. I think that they will. And even though I'm 37, Sean, I grew up, you know, with the Bulls, I'm frankly tired of hearing guys from that era act like they would kill the Warriors. They, they'd sweep them. It wouldn't even be close. Do you buy that argument whatsoever? Well, you know, Ross, that's the ultimate talk radio water cooler discussion about a scenario that we'll never see. Uh, um, you know, people will say that, you know, with the – but the rule changes, you know, you, you, you can't hand-check Steph Curry, and so therefore he's going to go off. Like, if, if, if that's the case, then you couldn't hand-check Michael Jordan. How many points would Michael Jordan average in that series? Um, I was lucky enough to see the Jordan, I mean, Jordan and the Bulls at their height, all six championships, and now I'm watching the Warriors. Uh, I just think it would be very interesting, a very interesting series. But anything that I say, what difference does it make? We're not going to see it. I can tell you this. If the Warriors were to play the Bulls right now, they'd probably win because Michael Jordan's over 50. <laughs> and if the Bulls were to play the Warriors back then, they'd probably win because Steph Curry was only seven. And really, that's really that's the only way you can really look at really look at it and get an accurate, you know, assessment of the situation. Yeah, I just don't remember teams shooting and passing like the Warriors do. I I love it. I'm with you. I think they should be on national TV every single game next year. And I'm not kidding. I do want to ask you, Sean, one question about Kobe Bryant. So this might not be that popular, but I think it's a legitimate question to ask. He's obviously one of the best players of all time. Fantastic career. But when we're sizing up Kobe against a guy like Magic Johnson or Michael Jordan or LeBron James maybe someday or maybe even Steph Curry, how much credit do you give Kobe for the three titles he won with Shaq? In other words, I know that all these guys had a good player with them, but Michael Jordan was still the best player on those Bulls teams. And Magic Johnson was still the best players on the Lakers team and LeBron, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas as good as Kobe was and is, I do not think he was the best player on those first three Lakers teams. So does he get the same credit for those championships even though he wasn't really the alpha male those years? Yeah, I, I think you have to give him some credit. Look, Shaq was the best player on that team. Shaq was the face of the franchise. Um, they're not, obviously not even coming close to winning without Shaq. But I think we saw a growth in Kobe those three years. Uh, here's a guy who, you know, he had all those air balls against the Golden State, uh, the Utah Jazz in Game 5 of the uh, 97 West Conference Finals. And he grew up a lot from there to the point where, even Shaq, I think after the second championship, said Kobe is the best player in the game. You know, you, you saw a guy go from, he was 17 years old when he was drafted, to pretty quickly becoming an, an A-list star in about three or four years. I, do, I, would, I would agree with you this. I think what, what we saw from Kobe uh, after Shaq and during Pau Gasol was much more impressive than what we saw from Kobe with Shaq because he became a singular star without him. You know, we saw the MVP, the scoring titles. And then with Pau Gasol, I thought he, well, he went to the finals three times and, and he won two of them. I thought he had a less impressive team then than he had with Shaq. And uh, he showed us, you know, the famous competitive stare, the, you know, the grit, the desire, all the things that make him a basketball icon now. We saw that. And he's had a great career. I mean, make no mistake about it. Yeah, it's crazy. They were showing video from when he was younger. I almost forgot, Sean, how athletic he was, how explosive he was. You know, it's been such a long time since he was that kind of player, the injuries and everything, just some of the dunks he had. Absolutely incredible. Sean, really appreciate the time and you hopping aboard. 
Anytime, Ross. There he is, Sean Powell, NBA.com. Good stuff. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.